Welcome to the Merly End. I'm Dominic Machado, and today I am joined by the doyen of Sri Lankan cricket history writing, Nick Brooks, and everyone's favorite sports broadcaster from Sri Lanka, Estelle Vasudevan. We're going to be talking about the first test at Old Trafford and the upcoming second test at Lourdes. But before we get into that, please like, follow, and subscribe on whatever platform you're looking at this on, on YouTube, on Facebook, um, on your podcast app. We have been thrilled to have the support um, that you guys have given us, and it's allowed us to make a lot of great content over the last few weeks and months. Um, But we still need your support in order to keep doing that. I want to turn it over to Nick for a second before we dive into the show about a really awesome meetup opportunity that's coming up in the next few days. So Nick, take it away. Yeah, every day during the Lord's Test, straight after close, we are going to be at the Three Falcons Pub. It's a short walk from the ground just off Edgware Road. Uh, we're going to, there'll be lots of special guests. We'll be doing panels discussing the day's play. There'll be lots of other Sri Lankan fans who you can celebrate or grieve with. The pub serves great curry. It does a mean pint of Guinness or Kingfisher, if that's more your tipple. And Mark and I will be there every evening, uh, hoping to meet lots of you guys, hoping to talk about the day's cricket. Mark would also not forgive me if I didn't mention that you have to sign up and follow our WhatsApp channel. We have been at the ground today by the Nets taking some videos. We were in the press conference talking to Kamindu Mendes and everything that we are doing throughout this series goes straight onto the WhatsApp channel first. So please do join it and yeah, I'll send it back to you, Dom. Yeah. And don't forget, subscribe to the newsletter. Nick has been giving us daily reports of what's going on. And um, it's some of the best stuff out there. I love reading them at the end of the day. Even though I've spent eight hours watching it, it's like recapping the whole thing in your mind. So subscribe to that. It's free. It goes right to your inbox, and you'll get a little pleasant surprise at the end of the day's play when you're mulling over all the things that have happened. All right. So let's jump into it, right? Um, We haven't done a review show, even though Nick and Mark did – live responses, live podcasts from every day of the test at Lord. So we wanted to hold up until we got to the presser today so that we could give you some preview information as well. But um, Nick, since you were on the ground, tell us a little bit about um, how you felt Sri Lanka did in that first test. Did they meet your, did they meet your expectations? Did you, did they exceed them? How do you feel? How did you come out feeling about it? Wow, it was like such a topsy-turvy test, right? And uh, I think at six for three on the first morning, all of our worst fears were being realised. But I think it's incredible testament to this side that every time they seem down and out in this test, they battle bravely, they showed strength and resilience, which I think a lot of people thought was beyond them. And they really dug in and fought and they played some really compelling cricket over the course of four days. And I think actually won a lot of hearts and minds in England. You know, the talk around the ground after the first morning was whether this test would be over in three days. I think after that horrible third morning when Sri Lanka were really sloppy in the field, uh, the feeling was that they'd again thrown the game away. Uh, but, you know, there were some outstanding individual performances from Kamindu, from Asitha, uh, from Anjan Chandi, from DDS, from Milan Ratnayaka, from Prabhat. You know, so a lot of guys stood up and I think they gave England a real scare. And, you know, uh, got to give props to Jamie Smith, who I thought batted absolutely mm-hmm. beautifully, not just in making a century, but the runs that he made in that second innings of 39 took a lot of tension out of the game where Brook and Root had really been tied down and it felt like it was still uh, right in the balance. I think Sri Lanka did a lot of things well and they'll look back on a couple of things that they did badly. But, you know, Dinesh Chandamal in the post-match conference said, we're over the moon with what we've shown and we feel that we can get something out of this series. And I reckon they're going to go to Lords with more confidence than they had uh, going into that Old Trafford test. Spirits in the group looked great today. And I think the team are really excited to be at Lords, uh, happy to be in slightly warmer weather, ready to see more Sri Lanka fans because there weren't that many in Manchester. So yeah, I think the signs are looking up and um, I'd say they exceeded my expectations whilst confirming a few of the flaws that we feared were going to rear their heads. I mean, some of those that we thought were going to be a problem do exist, right? The bowling is potentially a bit shorthanded. The top order 
is going to struggle against the moving ball. But we saw so much good stuff that, yeah, I'd say my expectations were exceeded. Yeah, I think one of the things to, to pick up on uh, what Nick said that showed kind of the tenacity and fight that Sri Lanka put up, I think uh, a friend of the podcast, Andrew Fidel Fernando, talked about a 20% discount when Sri Lanka plays in cold weather. And I've seen Sri Lankans play in cold weather and they look scared, they're huddled up, their hands are in their pockets, they're not really, they don't look ready to play cricket. But even though the weather looked absolutely horrible there, right, um, people from England were wearing their coats and their hats and had their umbrellas, it did not look comfortable, they seemed ready for the fight right? They seem ready to put up. They were running around. They weren't keeping their hands in their pockets. They were really up for it. They were really ready. Um, and I, I agree. They, they definitely exceeded expectations. Estelle, how do you feel about that? Do you, would you take that first test as um, exceeding expectations or meeting them? Yeah, I think they were excellent, right? I mean, if you look at the calls for the uh, extra practice game, I think given the fact that they only played one, it was really good the way they went out there and performed. I think generally you expect a team to kind of take that first test um, to kind of settle into things. But there were many occasions, and I think they had like two really bad sessions. But apart from that, they were really in the game. And I think what's most important is that, I hope at least, that it gives them the confidence that this England team can be beaten, right? This England team isn't um, like, you know, this perfect team on paper either. It has its own flaws and obviously they've lost Mark Wood. They don't have Ben Stokes. There are some areas that Sri Lanka can capitalize on. I think, um, I hope that it gives them that belief. And I also hope, and I kind of mentioned this uh, in another pod I did on good areas as well about the test. I hope they are not satisfied with just competing in the first test. It's a great start to the series. And I think England will be on their toes from now on. But it's important that they also believe that they don't have to only take England close. They yeah. can beat them in the coming two tests, particularly as we're expecting conditions to be a lot more comfortable for the Sri Lankan side. Um, so I hope they take that kind of confidence into the Lord's test. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I'm remembering back to that 2016 tour right, where I think they're opening, where their first three innings they batted, they scored 91, 119, and 106 or something like that. So we've kind of blown past that bar, right? So we're not looking shell shock, We're not looking surprised. But I think it's really important to think about how do we beat this English, England team? What are the ways we can take advantage of what we saw, right? What are the, who are the players we really need to kind of um, batten down the hatches for and really try to get them out, right? Who are the players who are going to make and break the game? And obviously the loss of Wood is going to be huge because he changed the complexion of um, both Sri Lankan batting innings. He was so, so good. Um, he was able to extract that awkward bounce. Um, he injured Chandamal, right? Which again has thrown some things into imbalance. But I think um, Sri Lanka will be saying, how can we win more of those moments? And how can we avoid those kind of tricky um, sessions where it seems like things are falling apart um, and reclaim them, right? And come in with a plan so that we never let those sessions go awry. Of course, sometimes that's not going to happen. Um, so Estelle, I want to come back to you uh, to ask you about your thoughts on Kamindu Mendes's innings. Now, you, the reason why I'm coming back to you is you mentioned they only had one warm-up match. Kamindu didn't even play the warm-up match because he was still stuck in Sri Lanka. So he comes out, he has you know a, a middling first innings, right? And then in the second innings, he plays this brilliant knock, a 113 um, to score a century in his second ever innings in England. What did you make of the knock? Um, and how do you see it sort of building in the trajectory of Kamindo's career, which um, I think we've acknowledged on this podcast has been a little bit topsy-turvy so far? The, the first thing is I'm really glad that people are seeing him now for the better that he is and not just the ambidextrous bowler, right? Because that's how he started things off in his career. Uh, he played limited overs cricket and, you know, there was all this hype about him being able to bowl with both arms. It's, I mean, justified because it's very rare that we see it and it could be a huge deal in uh, T20 cricket, right? When matchups and all of that is so important. 
uh, but I'm glad that people are seeing the batter that he is because he's such a good batter, right? There are some players, I think, and I, I will say I was, I realized this when I saw him batting on his debut against Australia, is that yeah. there are some batters like him, Patum Nisanka, they seem like their game is made for test cricket, the way they play, uh, play cricket, right? Um, yeah. Obviously, Patum has gone on to become one of Sri Lanka's better um, limited overs batters in during his career so far but when you see them for the first time the way they play it's it's kind of like obvious that these guys are made to play this format of the game and i think that can be said about coming to mendis he showed really really great composure i thought right throughout the test um and just going through the the press conference he was at today uh prior to the second test um, him talking about keeping things simple, I think that was exactly what she, what he did, right? Mm -hmm. He wasn't looking to do too many things, and it's and it can be tough for a young player coming in from a limited over series where he was batting uh, six, seven, where he needs to get quick runs, he needs to be innovative, yeah. to come into a setup like this where Sri Lanka in a bit of a, a bit of a tough situation, and then to you know um, rescue them and play the type of innings he did with the support of a senior player. And most importantly, he he wasn't playing second fiddle, right? He mm -hmm. was leading that uh, performance with the bat. So that was really good to see. Uh, I expect that at some point he will move up the order. I hope it's not in this uh, upcoming test, but I think he's probably a top four batter, maybe a number three or number four eventually. Uh, I'm glad that they kind of brought him into the side Um as a number number seven, so he has mm -hmm. that little bit of time where he can, uh, you know, work on his game, get a bit accustomed to um, international cricket, and then be moved up the order. Like I said, I hope it doesn't happen in in the coming test. Uh, but he, from what we've seen so far, he seems like a guy who is able to adapt, um, and he has a mindset of or the temperament to play test cricket, right? Mm -hmm. And, and I think you made a really good point about the simplicity of his batting, right? Um, he seems to be a very decisive batter, right? He'll, he'll step out onto the front foot and he'll be able to judge the length and line very quickly. And he has shots that he knows he can play. I mean, he looks like a delightful left-hander to watch with those um, rasping cuts, those beautiful cover drives. But he's also got a wonderful pickup shot that he plays on the legs. If you stray leg side, um, he can hook and pull the ball very well, which again makes him uh, a batter to watch in limited overs too. But he just looked like a batter on top of his game. He knew what he was going to do the entire innings, and he didn't waver from that. There was no attempt to kind of do something different or unorthodox. He just batted the way he wanted to bat, and it resulted in a big, big score. I think, um, Estelle, that question of whether he should – go up the order or not is is an important one. Um, just kind of statistically, right, uh, in the last test, and this is for both England and Sri Lanka batters, um, the top three averaged 13.5 between them. The middle order batters, so four to seven on, on both teams, averaged 53, right? And I don't think that's as much about the quality of the batters there as much as how difficult it was to um, play the new ball, right? So bringing Kamindu up to play the new ball in England is going to ask him to do more than just keeping it, keep it simple, right? It's going to ask him to kind of do something else, right? And if he's scoring a lot of runs from number seven, and if we can say generally in England, batting against the new ball is the hardest thing that you pretty much can do, right? And that there are runs often to be scored once you get through that spell, keep, keeping him at the bottom of the order, keeping him at seven, right? An informed player is going to provide um, some help. Uh, Nick, you wrote very eloquently about um, Kamindu's innings. What was what were some of the shots that um, that Kamindu played that kind of left an imprint on your brain? I mean, first of all, it was the hook against Mark Wood, right? I mean, I think... He did look slightly edgy with Wood bowling short at him really first up because it was quick and he looked like he was slightly riding his luck. But the fact that he was 
positive enough to take him on, really said something. And then, as you say, Dom, it was just those rasping shots through the offside. Like, he had that really clear mindset that when the ball was straight, he was going to defend. And anything that, any time the ball was offered width, he was going to get after it. The three fours in one over off Atkinson, I thought were especially memorable, especially I think the one in the middle, which was just a really good length ball. One was short, one was over pitch, but that one that was on a nice length and he just kind of tapped it through covers. And it was interesting watching on because a lot of batsmen were struggling to hit boundaries, right? It was a really slow outfield, but the ball just seemed to be pinging off Kamindu's bat. I thought the way that he played the seamers was slightly reminiscent of Sanga. I thought the way that he dealt with the spinners had a little bit of Mahela about it. You know, when it was short, he rocked back really quickly and pulled them. Uh, when they overpitched slightly, he used his feet and danced down the wicket. So, I mean, it was a hugely impressive innings. People in the press box were cooing about the simplicity and style in his game. And yeah, I think he won a, won a lot of admirers in England with that inks. And in addition to Kamindu playing well, the rest of the middle order seemed to uh, have performed well too. Angelo scored a 50. DDS scored a 50. Dinesh Chandamal scored a, <coughs> excuse me, an excellent rear guard 50 um, in that second innings with a bunged up thumb. Right. That was a brilliant piece of batting. Very, very brave batting. So it was really good to see those seniors step up and put in substantial knocks, um, especially in the first match. And there's hope that they'll do more of it. But that being said, right, the Sri Lankan top order did have a bit of a struggle. Right. Um, I think there were two ducks, uh, four single figure scores. And the highest score was, I think, Demus 27, followed by Kussel's. 24. Um, how much do we read when you want to read into these top order struggles? Um, was it a matter of difficult conditions or is it really something where our players are not quite up to the task of facing the new ball in England? Estelle, I'm going to toss this one to you. It's an interesting one. I think it's a combination of things. For Kusal Mendes, I think it's just the lack of form, right? He hasn't been in good form. If you if you watch his dismissal, he, dismissals, his feet are going nowhere, right? They're yeah. stuck in the crease, um, and he ends up nicking the ball. I, I wonder if it has anything to do with how he's kind of shifted his uh, technique uh, or subtly to to suit limited overs cricket more, because obviously he's had a really good run in T20 cricket over the last couple of years, right? Um, I think of the three, Madhushka. You can't really, I mean, it would be great if he made runs, obviously, and he he yeah. has the ability to do that. But you can't really be expecting too much from him. He's making his, you know, he's playing in England for the first time, hasn't played a lot of test cricket. And as you know, Sri Lanka don't play a lot or very frequently, right? Um, so you're not expecting too much from him. I think Dimuthi is the one who uh, was a bit disappointing. I think if I look at that test, hmm. um, Dimuth and maybe Vishwa are the two who I would have would have thought would have performed well in that first test and w would have given Sri Lanka a better chance of winning the game, right? Um, Dimuth's dismissals, I don't know if there's a pattern that you can see in them per se, but he'll be disappointed, I'm sure, that he hasn't been able to get runs, particularly because I think we discussed this uh, prior to the series as well, it's it's like his chance to, mm -hmm. you know, establish his legacy, right? I, I can't imagine he's going to play on for too many more years. Um, but this is his, and we, I mean, Sri Lanka are playing in England after eight years, so we don't know when yeah. they're playing there again, right? So this is his big chance, a three-match series, to really get some runs um, and establish himself as one of, one of the best openers of this era. Um, Particularly, to be honest, coming up against this English bowling attack, right? Yeah. I know Wood's good. There's no doubt that they're good bowlers, right? But they're very inexperienced, right? And this is, in terms of conditions in the pitch, this is kind of the best Sri Lanka could hope for, right? Yeah. They're not playing in May and June where it's so tough for uh, uh, subcontinental teams. They're playing at a time where it's the end of the season. So they're going to get warmer weather and they're going to get more worn-out worn pitches. So I think Dimuth is the one, if at all, 
uh, you would have expected to have done better. I wonder if there's going to be a change in the top three. We are hearing lots of things. I mean, I uh, saw a tweet from Rex Clementine saying that Nishan Madushka will be taking the gloves um, and Patum Nisanka will be coming in as opener. So I assume by that that uh, Madushka will be moving lower down the order, whether it's number three or beyond that, we don't know. And of course, that Dinesh Andimal will play, but will play as a pure back. So Kusal Mendes will be out. That's what we're hearing. We don't yeah. know what will happen. I mean, uh, the test is two days away, right? So uh, I'm sure Sri Lanka also yet to kind of finalize what's going to happen. Uh, so I'd be interested to see it. The only thing I think that we, I, we, I think I, I can speak for you as well when I say that you have to be patient, whoever yeah. you play, whether it's Fatum or Nishan or whoever it is, you have to give them time to get into uh, their roles and to get accustomed to what things, what they're facing. Because mm -hmm. there are so many factors at play here, right? Like, if you take Patum Nisanka, when he started off his career, like I mentioned before, like, you looked at him and thought, this guy is going to be a great test player, right? He's, yeah. he's made tons of runs in first-class cricket. Uh, he's batting really well. His game is suited to test cricket. But then he found himself as Sri Lanka's limited overs opener. And to his credit, like he went from that, you know, he should be a test cricketer to one of the best uh, white ball openers during the last two years. Right? I mean, if you look globally, he's been probably in the top five um, in terms of consistency, particularly in the in the ODI format, right? Um, so then you expect him to come into the test team and how do you want him to play things, right? Do, do you yeah. want him to go back to how he was uh, two, two and a half years ago and play that kind of mm -hmm. the way he used to play then? Or does he bring some aspects of limited overs cricket into his game? It's all, it's not, it's not easy, right? To adjust yeah. to things, uh, particularly in alien conditions. So whoever it is that gets in, uh, I think patience is going to be really valuable because no one bat batter is going to be the quick fix for Sri Lanka, right? I'm, I mean, I'm saying that, but uh, Patu Misaka might come in and make a double hundred. Yeah. We don't know that. But patience is really important, particularly even with Nishan Madushka, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I think he should be given all three games. Uh, just because you are, you would probably destroy a player if you leave him out after one or two matches, right? Um, and he's a He's the he's a kind of guy who they've maybe a mark to play only test cricket at least in the foreseeable future. Uh, so you have to give those players the chances to prove mm. themselves, right? Like, I mean, I know people will say Kamina Mendes has done so much in four tests, but also his role is it's not easy, but it's easier than mm. opening the batting uh, yep. in England, right? So you have to there has to be a lot of I think coddling in test cricket, mm -hmm. mainly because we don't play a lot of test cricket, right? So players aren't used to having to adjust so quickly between formats. Um, yeah, so I really hope there is whatever happens with if Patton comes in and he fails, I hope that support is still there for him and he's getting the right messaging from the management as well as to what he needs to do and what his role in the side is. Yeah, I 100% agree. Uh, with with what you say here, Estelle, I think it is so important for young players coming into the team to be assured of that spot. So if they persist with Nishan in this test, even if he scores, you know, two ducks, you have to give him the third test. I think it's absolutely it would be absolutely destructive to say, OK, you're not performing well, because how can you reasonably expect a player that young who's played? very few tests, who's never played test cricket in England, right? Who's batting in the hardest position to bat in England to do that, right? And you just kind of have to back them and say, look, um, we believe in your talent. We've seen what you can do. And we're going to back you for the next six, seven, eight tests, right? So that he knows, okay, I have a chance to, I, I don't have to worry that if I don't score, that I'm going to get dropped. And the same thing with Potham, right? If you're going to come in and bring him in as an opener, right? And the, and and we'll get into this because uh, I want to ask your your thoughts on 
the batting order, because I think there are some interesting questions that linger there. You have to be willing to persist with him because he is such a young, talented player. We've seen how persistence with him has paid off royally in the ODI format, right? And give him a clear brief of how they want him to play, right? And I think Sonath might be the ideal guy in terms of how do you translate an aggressive white ball game Mm -hmm. to test match cricket, right? And test match cricket in England, because we've seen Sonath do that, right? At the same time, I think uh, there's got to be some careful thought about if you can bat through 10 overs, especially in these sort of late August, early September pitches, the swing and seam Mm -hmm. generally moves away and that is plenty of good time for batting, right? So that also kind of has to be part of the calculus here, right? Losing three wickets early on, yes, it might happen, but you want to avoid against that because then you can get more runs from everybody. Um, Regarding Kusal Mendes, I think... There are basically two things that you can do. Um, and just to, to get back up on your your point, yeah, he's very rooted to the crease. And, and as you said, I think one of the changes he's made in his limited over batting is he's being play, he's played inside the line a lot, right? Because you're less likely to get that uh, ball that angles in and then moves away. Very hard to do that in one day cricket. You maybe have one over where you can do that. So if you're playing inside the line, right, as a leg side player, which he is, You can score runs, right? But, and that kind of covers up for the fact that his feet don't get moving early in an innings. But against England, right, in England, where you've got this wobble seam where it'll angle in and just move away slightly, it's a big problem, right? So I think that that is a problem that's not going to fix itself. I don't imagine him, you know, fixing that technique problem. So I think the the other option, right, is, if whoever is keeping is going to go down the order, right, and that might happen if Nisanka does that, you could see Mendes being particularly effective lower down the order, and you say just play sort of a Litton Doss role and 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 go for it. Um, at the same time, that'll mean moving somebody up to number three, yeah. right? and in some ways, Mendes at three is a little bit of a protective move because you shield some of your younger players mm. from exposure early in innings right from the swinging ball and you allow them to to capitalize on their form so you know an out of form player in a position like three maybe isn't the worst thing when the ball is swinging around um because either they score runs and they get themselves into form or they get out and that brings in a batter who is actually in form to to sort of um bat when the time is good so it's a tricky 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 situation there i think at the top order but um at the end of the day, what we have to preach, especially with the likes of Madushka and Patham Nisanka, is patience, mm-hmm. right? We can't expect them to do well in England in their first tour unless they are backed to the hilt and they're given full support that they will be. Um, we've talked a lot about the batting, Estelle. Let's turn a little bit to the bowlers. Um, Mark and Nick did a good job of talking about how good Asitha was, right? Um There was a little bit, I would say, if there's one thing that was disappointing, and we talked about this on the preview pod, is this did not look like an attack that could take 20 wickets. Um, Prabhath, sorry, Asitha took six at 21. Um, Prabhath, who filled that holding role primarily, averaged 36 and took five wickets. And the rest of the bowlers only took four wickets in the whole test at an average of 63. Um, You mentioned earlier, Estelle, that you found Vishwa to be disappointing. And I think a big part of that is he was bowling in England prior to this Mm -hmm. and actually having some success. So what do you think? Do you think it was just uh, bad form? What do you think they got wrong when it came to bowling outside of Prabhat and and Asitha? First of all, I think Prabhat was quite good, wasn't he? I mean, there were so many calls about... You know, he, he needs goal, the goal pitch to be successful. But he, in patches at least, was really good. I thought he did that holding job quite well uh, okay. in the middle kind of periods of the innings. Asita was as good as you can expect, right? He's He's been one of the better bowlers for Sri Lankan Test cricket over the last few years. Vishwa, I just felt like he couldn't really find much rhythm. It was strange mm. from him because you're used to seeing him just 
as soon as he starts going he's just right at the spot he's he's yeah. um, you know found his rhythm found his pace um and his lights and lens but that didn't seem like the case i wonder what it is honestly um i think the big issue for sri lanka and i think it did in in a sense cost them uh, the game was that they didn't have that enforcer mm. and we spoke about lahira kumar before the test right when we were previewing the series um and i and i think i said look i would love to have him but we haven't seen much of him uh in the recent past so we don't know what kind of rhythm he is in mm. uh, what kind of pace he is bowling so i don't know maybe it's a it's it's the time to to risk it because you need yeah. that guy uh if you look at england's uh first innings right when james smith came out and hit that century i think that was the time when sri lanka needed someone to maybe just put a bit, few doubts in the lower orders minds i mean chris wokes gus atkinson can both bat mark wood is is a decent hitter as well yeah. right but i don't think I, like i i think i've said this in other podcasts as well like i don't think either one, like any one of them is a number 7 batter yeah i mean i would keep i i would say wokes is a really good number 8 to have but is he number 7 i'm not too sure about that right and if you had that guy who can bowl quick uh who can bowl bowl at their heads bowl at their toes yeah. rush them a bit uh maybe you could have had a dis- different result there because they had they added plenty of runs with um, uh jv smith right wokes made 25 yeah. atkinson 20 potts 17 markwood 22 so more yeah. than 80 runs there itself from from the 7 to uh, number 10 right uh, so that is the area sri lanka were lacking and the fact that they had to depend on just two bowlers uh, was a huge i think was probably a huge amount of pressure on someone like asita as well right because yeah. you know prabhat's going to be the the holding guy he's not going to be taking 10 wickets but um uh, asita is the guy who needs to take wickets so i think that's one area that sri lanka really uh struggled with in the first test right but coming into lords and um the over i expect conditions to be a bit more spin friendly i mean that's yeah. what we're hearing from them isn't it that uh with the warmer weather the pitches are going to break down a bit so maybe prabhat becomes that you know the lead wicket taker wicket taker yeah. option for sri lanka but either way i don't know whether i want i would want to have both vishwa and milan um in the side and I, and i know people are going to be critical about the call on milan but yeah. i know he played he, i mean he was fantastic at the back right he put sri lanka in that game because without yeah. him they probably bowled out for 120 or 130 so he kept them in the game with that knock but at the end of the day his job is to take wickets and to bowl well right and i didn't see um maybe it's wrong to be critical of him after one game uh but you feel like you need you need he's not the guy who will make a huge impact right he he yeah. might be your economical bowler or when the ball is swinging a bit get a few nicks here and there but he doesn't seem like a guy who can kind of run through a batting lineup i'm happy to be proven wrong as always yeah. but um i don't know i i feel like it might be time to bring in either lahir kumar or maybe if you want rajit who offers something different again yeah. um to the side Yeah, I I think um couple couple things I want to pick up on. You know, when you have when you're playing with four bowlers, you can't have only two wicket taking options, mm-hmm. right? And and they obviously expected much more from Vishwa, and I think the big thing was he wasn't able to get any swing. Right? You know, that is kind of his his wheelhouse, right? He swings the ball with the new ball. He gets those le- uh, those right arm batters um right-handed batters in trouble early right with the ball hooping around swinging around going on um and things like that and the fact that he was unable to find swing was a bit um discomforting right and uh you know he he kind of got bashed around a little bit the first couple overs of that second innings and then um DDS immediately took him off and started bowling Prabhas which again I think the commentators were talking about this reduce the swing even more right mm-hmm. and the fact that okay you pull him you pull vishwa but you don't go to milan and they didn't bowl milan ratnayaka at all when 
the ball was going to swing. So it seems like they don't think he can do much in the air, right? And he seemed to be a good holding containment bowler. And if he's your sort of fourth seam option, right, and you have three other attacking options, maybe that's okay. Maybe you can play him. But um, I didn't see anything that would tell me he could uh, run through a side. I think my, my thought, um, and we'll talk about selection for the Lord's test, is that um, Rajatha we know can move the ball both ways. He's been a useful red ball bowler. Um, if you're not going to get that swing from uh, Vishwa, I think Kasson is a good way to get use mm-hmm. of the new ball. And I think um, Kamara is exactly who you want at, as first change, right? Um, we saw England do that with Wood. And then who are they replacing Wood with? Ollie Stone, right? Someone who does that exact same thing, comes in, bowls fast, bowls at knees and, you know, heads and toes, right? And tries to um, get batters out with his pure pace, right? I don't think having three bowlers who are bowling around, you know, high 120s, low 130s is, is going to strike fear into a lot of people. Um, the other thing that's interesting that you mentioned, Estelle, is how much spin these wickets are going to take at Lords and at the Oval, which have historically, you know, taken a decent amount of skin. We all know spin. We all know what Murley did at the Oval in 98, yeah. right? Um, so Prabath could be threatening. I think the second spin option is interesting. So when Kamindu came on and bowled a little bit in the first innings, he actually bowled uh, right-armed. He bowled off spin at uh, England's very right-hand heavy bowling lineup. So I was kind of surprised to see that he didn't bowl sort of uh, slow left arm there. And I'm curious how they plan, if it does spin, how they plan to attack that, given that um, DDS, right, who's the other spin option, again, is an off-spin bowler. Um, So I wonder if they'll have a a plan of attack to kind of attack this very right-hand heavy England batting lineup. So I think... Estelle, is there anything you want to add about that first test? I think we've covered pretty much everything. Yeah, I think we have too. Yeah. Um, a good performance. I don't know. It, it's very interesting to me how the batting is going to be changed up, if it's going to yeah. be changed up. Like you mentioned, the batting order, right? Because yeah. if Patham comes in, then you're probably batting him either opening or at number three. But that means moving Nishan Madushka, yeah. who you were kind of he's been given that role right to open yeah. so it's very interesting to me that they would want to change that right up when when they've they've taken another keeper as well right not to forget they have Sadira Samara yeah. Vikram in their rank so mm. if they need a keeping option that might be one um but I'd be very interested actually to see how they go about the batting um yeah because I mean, Sri Lanka were very, very close, right? So yeah. they don't want to mess up, mess with things too much also going into that second test. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think one of the options that comes up is if you have a Nisanka open, right? Madushka keeps, maybe you move him down the order and you move Kamindu Mendes up to three. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm a little bit worried about this. And you expressed concern about this earlier that's a lot of pressure, right? It's like, okay, you scored runs, now go score runs at one of the hardest positions to score runs in world cricket. Joe Root, right? We know how good Joe Root is, right? We saw how easily he scores. His record at three compared to four is hugely different. He Mm -hmm. averages, I think, low 30s. um, And since 2019, low 30s in that number three spot. But at number four, he's just minting runs, right? So I think I'd be very careful about moving Kamindu. Um, especially given the form that he's in, given that runs sort of start to flow once the ball get, gets older mm-hmm. in England, right? Why don't you just take advantage of his great form and say, okay, you're going to be our lower order batter. You're going to score yeah. runs for us. And then tell him, okay, next series, we want you to bat at three and give him time to prepare and let him kind of work on those skill sets at a distance as opposed to, okay, let's do it right now, mm-hmm. right? In a crunch test where they're going to try to win and, put themselves, give themselves a chance to win the test series, right? Because I think that's what they should be thinking. How do we win that test series? Um, Again, the question of what role do the seniors play, right? Because at five and six, you have two of their most experienced cricketers in Dinesh Chandamal and DDS 
batting down the order. Um, would it make more sense, you know, given their experience, given that DDS has batted at three, batted at three before, Chundamal has batted up the order before at four, um, Angelo, you know, has basically been in early many, many mm. times in his career. Can you move one of them up? Right. And I think that becomes the question is how much shuffling do you do to a lineup that was successful? Yeah, I mean, like we were talking about off off air, right? Um, one of the big criticisms I would say when we look back at Dinesh Chandimar's career in Test cricket would be that he doesn't bat in the top four. Uh, I think he spent a lot of time at number four early in his career, uh, then moved down the order, especially mm-hmm. as he's not keeping wickets. Um, I feel like that that is one area that you can probably be a bit critical of. Mm. Uh, I don't, you know what, I don't know whether it's his choice or um, the management's choice to keep him uh, at number five and six, right? But you would expect, um, like I mentioned before with Kamindu, the, the newer players getting to kind of ease into things at number five, six, and seven. And you have your players as they get experience moving up the order. I mean, yeah. Patam Nisanka start, started off at number six as well in Test cricket, right? He played a couple of uh, games at number six, then was moved up the order. Uh, so it's very interesting to me that that hasn't happened with Chandimal. I know Matthews was five, six, and now is moved to yeah. number four, right? Uh, but number three is not, it's a tough, tough place to bet, yeah. right? Like if you look at Sri Lanka's record for number threes, you have Sangha with an average of 60 plus at number three. <laughs> uh, I think you have Mahela um, who batted briefly at number three yeah. with an average of 50 plus and everybody else is for, below 40, right? Yeah. And which, yeah. I mean, in ODI cricket, you would take an average of 38, 39 with a good strike rate. But in test cricket, anything less than 40 is just a middling career, right? Yeah. Uh, so Sri Lanka haven't had like massive successes apart from Sangakara at yeah. that number three spot. So it goes to show how tough it is to bat in that position, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's not to excuse Kusal Mendes or anything like that. He's, he's <laughs> right. had plenty of run. I mean, he's had plenty of time at it uh, with the... You have to also ask the question, right? Like, what is his incentive to prioritize test cricket? There is yeah. none, right? Because of how few games Sri Lanka play and how much more ODI and T20 cricket we play. And where there is actually some context to the limited overs cricket we play, right? Yeah. Um, so, so there is that question as well, right? For someone like Usal Mendes, does he want to change his game to kind of be more suited to? Uh, test cricket when he's had having success in T20 cricket, right? Um, it's sad, I think, with Kusar Mendes. It's for me at least. What disappoints me is that you know he's this is a really talented guy, right? Yeah. He's ha- he has a really high ceiling. He is, to be honest, talent wise, really up there. You don't see a lot of cricketers like him, yeah. right? Uh, Talent or potential is only like a possibility. It's only yeah. an unmet thing, right? It, it's it's an intangible thing. So if that's not converting into like regular performances and you look at a number three, you want him to be performing in every game, right? You yeah. want him to be seeing off that new ball if he has to come in early. You want him to be making your big runs. And that's not happening regularly enough with Kusal Mendes. And that is the problem. Uh, yep. There has never been any doubt about his talent, right? No one is, yep. I mean, if you are doubting it, I don't know. I don't know what to say, but like, there's never been a doubt about his talent. It's just that at some point, uh, you have to make a decision whether, you know, you've given a player, a, a mm-hmm. certain player enough chances. Uh, and maybe that, if that time is not now for Kusal Mendes, it's certainly, it, it, it's certainly something people, are discussing or the administration must be discussing right yeah um it's it's he's just what what makes it sad is that you know he can do so much we've seen him play some incredible innings right yeah. that a lot of players wouldn't be able to play 
Um, so that's what's disappointing about it. He's, he gets a lot of hate on social media. He's not a very popular character. So I guess <laughs> mentally also it's not, it, it's it's yeah. probably a tough for him. Uh, but yeah, whatever player comes next, I hope he, they get as much opportunities as him because yeah. he's been given the long rope in Test cricket for sure. Yeah. yeah, I think that's absolutely spot on. And I think, you know, when anytime you bring up Whistle Mendes, it's it's like kind of a litmus test to mm-hmm. where you stand on uh, in, in Sri Lanka cricket, right? Um, and And I think you're right. Batting at three is hard. There's a reason why other guys haven't done it. Um, looking at Dinesh Chandamal's record, batting at three, he averages 19.6, right? And you look at someone like Chandamal and you say, he is someone who has the skill set to bat at three, right? And even at four, it turns out he bats, he, he averages 37. But at five, he averages 52, right? So um, I think there's a reason why Sri Lankan batters struggle, right? You had someone like Sangakara who worked so much to make that number three position his home in test cricket, right? There was no doubt in his mind ever that that's what he wanted to be. He wanted to be the greatest number three ever to play for Sri Lanka and the greatest number three ever to play, period, full stop, right? And he worked on making his game suited for that, right? Now whoever comes in at three, we we don't have any red ball only cricketers who are only going to be focusing on making runs, right? We don't have a Steve Smith, right? We don't have someone who is who that's their number one priority or focus. Yeah. And so and a Steve Smith called, would yeah. probably be playing double the number of test matches, right? Exactly, right. Or even Ollie Pope, right? Mm-hmm. Whose record he's played 50 test matches and he averages 35, right? Mm-hmm. So he's been given every chance to do it in England and he's not, you know, lighting the world on fire. It's just a, it is a very tough position to play unless, and even India have had trouble finding a consistent number three, right? Uh, Pujara struggled, right? And now finds himself out of the side and now they're experimenting with different players. When you play all around the world, that is a difficult position to bat. Um, And I think what it comes down to is certainly Chris Mendes has the talent and the skill to do it, um, I won't even say if he wants to, because I'm sure he wants to perform, um, but that there are lots of things kind of uh, making it difficult. And it's the white ball pressures of you have to keep up with playing white ball cricket in a very different way than you play test cricket. Um, It's the pressures of being a player who plays these great innings, right? I think... Mm -hmm. Um, we all hope that Kusal and also Mendes... being being kind of earmarked from very young age yeah. as being like the next big, big thing, right? Right, right. I'm sure that yeah. comes with a ton of pressure as well because it's like there's no there's no win for him, right? If he yeah. does well, it's like okay, that's what we expected he's from you. Yeah. Uh, if he doesn't do well, then it's like look, he's overhyped and overrated yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And I think what what it comes down to is like he's a player who plays great innings, not a great player, right? And and that's kind of how I see it is that um, he has that capability, and we've seen enough to know that it's not going to be done consistently. Um, mm-hmm. I think in in T twenty cricket and and one day cricket, he has shown that he can be a good player. I wouldn't. I'm not at yet saying that he's a great player. Um, but I don't think we've seen enough from tests in tests to say that. But I think we should also um, realize that whoever is going to come into that spot, it's going to be very hard for yeah. them to make their way into test cricket. And they need to be given patience and a long leash so they can succeed. Um, and hopefully we'll also play more cr- test cricket so that whoever that number three is can develop the skill set to do well in England. Mm-hmm. South Africa and New Zealand and all those places. So um, I hope that they get that opportunity. And, um, you know, with Sri Lanka cricket, part of it too is you never know when your next chance is going to come. I'm sure even if Kusal Mendes gets dropped for these next two tests, uh, it won't be long before he gets a call up for some reason or another. Yeah, um, New, Ze- New Zealand is coming up next, right? At home. Yeah, so. it's coming up next. Yeah. A lot of cricket to be played. And Estelle, do you think last last question um, for Lords? Would you make any changes to the bowling lineup? Would you bring in Rajatha or Kumara? Maybe both of them. I would. I think 
Sri Lanka need that somebody to offer something different there, right? Um, I'd be, I would probably go Nahiru Kumara. I, I know that's the guy who I expressed a doubt about <laughs> prior to the series. But I think having seen how things went in the in the first game, that's absolutely something you need. England are playing one better shot. Um, so you have to have someone who can capitalize on, even if it's like him going to bowl three over um, spells, mm -hmm. right? Yep. You need to have someone who can force things to happen. Uh, yep. Because at the end of the day, 20 wickets you have to take to win the match, yep. right? Yep. You're not winning. I mean, even if you're scoring 500 runs, you have to take those wickets. And the batters showed that, uh, or at least the middle and low order showed that they can. When the ball gets older, they can really definitely compete. Remember, uh, England are without wood, right? And I'm sure that's going to have um, an effect. I know Ollie Stone is quick as well, but there will be some impact of them missing yep. out on Wood because Wood was so impactful for them. Even mm -hmm. even if he's not bowling well, right, that psychologically you know this guy can hit me uh, yeah. and this guy can hurt me. It does have an effect on batters. I, I, I immediately recall Dinesh Chandimal ducking to a delivery. Yeah. Um, and his bat was kind of sticking up like that and his arm went up like that, right? Yeah. And the commentators were like, you know, technique is so important when you're ducking under a ball. <laughs> you know, keep your hands down, keep your bat down. And that is correct. Like, obviously, yeah. that, that's the right way to do things. But your instinct is to protect your head as well, right? I mean, yeah. since uh, Phil Hughes' tragic death, that's sure to be playing in your head, right? No matter yeah. how long it's been, you don't want to be hit on the head by a bowler who's bowling that quick. Yeah. So I can understand that kind of instinct and they don't face a lot of bowlers at that mm -hmm. pace, right? Um, yeah. So, you know, Sri Lanka need that kind of person. It, it's so unfortunate that like, I wish we could have like a Matisha Patirana coming mm. to the test side, right? Or, you know, Tushara who oh, can swing the ball. Because that would add something so unique into the Sri Lankan bowling attack, right? Because like you yeah. said, uh, Asita can generate a bit of pace, but he's, he's nowhere close to 150, right? Uh, and Vishwa and Milan, very much medium pace yeah. territory. Uh, so just to have something different in that bowling attack, it would have been incredible. But I mean, I understand why they can't do that. Yeah. Uh, so Kumara, possibly, um, I would pick. If if yeah. if I had a choice, I'd like to see both of them in. To be honest, I think uh, Rajatha is massively underrated in tests. Mm -hmm. he, his career average is under thirty, and there are not many Sri Lankan fast bowlers who can make that claim. He's always know? the second, like he's always it's the second fiddle, the yeah. bridesmaid, right? Yeah. And Never it's funny the because <laughs> they've kind of backed him in white ball cricket, which yeah. is really not his. His but thing. even white ball cricket, he's always the injury replacement. He's the seventh he's option. The first the, yeah, 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 he's never the first choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's never the first choice. He's always the injury replacement, yeah. which is sad because, like you said, I, I, I agree. He's he's completely underrated. Yeah. Can be a really effective bowler, particularly in these conditions. Yeah, because he can move the ball both ways. He has a bit more pace than either of the other two. He's not quite, you know, Kumara paced, but he can hit one forty. Um, and he can bowl, he can run through lineups. We've seen him do that mm -hmm. before. Um, so I'd like to see him and Kumara in, um, obviously against a right hand heavy lineup, you want that left arm option, mm -hmm. but if Vishra is not bowling well, then I think you have two bowlers who have performed well in tests and that you can go to, right? It's not like we're saying, okay, bring up some guy who has never done it, yeah. right? These are two experienced bowlers who I think can provide, um, some good value. So uh, I'd like to see them both in. All right. Well, I think we've covered just about everything. Um, if you've made it this far on whatever platform you're on, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, uh, your podcast platform, give us a like, give us a subscribe, give us a follow, leave some comments. We love to read your comments. It's something that keeps us uh, uh, motivated. And um, as Nick reminded us, and Nick had some technical issues and had to, had to sign off uh, early, Please join Mark and Nick at the Three Falcons Pub after the end of play at Lords. It looks amazing. I was getting hungry just looking at um, the curries and the biryani that they had. 
Go have fun. Go enjoy. And we will be back on Thursday with more content from this test at Lourdes. Thank you. Bye.